some girls just want to watch World Cup. Jeff nailed another draft day. Nailed it. Top five has the 98. I got some more. Jason just loves some Kevin James. Fucking Kevin James. Please note that any comments, jokes, questions, maybe, anything that we say on the History of Bad Ideas is all in good fun, and remember, we insult everybody. Our thoughts, opinions, questions, anything else, actions that we do on the show do not reflect any of our employers, organizations, advertisers, or anyone else that is associated with the History of Bad Ideas. And remember, at the end of the day, it's just a joke. Welcome to the History of Bad Ideas, episode number 435. I'm Jason. I'm Jeff. I'm Jim. And I'm the intern. And with us this week, not Blake, he's suspended this week because of his Deshaun Watson jokes last week. It is Scab Jeff, film critic to the stars. How you doing, Jeff? I'm doing all right. It's been a while. It has been. Uh, you know, you can just message us and come on the show. Intern said that he didn't want to put you on there, so that's why. Intern's usually in charge of booking guests. He did not want to book you. That's false. I, I have heard that. Yes. Yes. False. No, no, that's your job. Really, that is your job. I reach out to floppy award-winning best stepson today, and he said he didn't want to come. <sighs> oh, he didn't. Oh, he, oh wait. He, he works eight-hour shifts now. Your, your stepson? He has worked one eight-hour shift. <laughs> <laughs> How old is he? Uh, 21. Okay, and... The, the eight-hour shift, that's a rough day. Today. That is a rough day. That, you know, you work eight hours, you should have at least two days off, right? No, he's got, we're right back at it tomorrow, so. Firemen do that, right? Yeah, they work one. One day, and then they're off for two. Yeah. Of course, I think that's 24 hours, but I'm not sure. I'm not good at math. Not good at math. Oh, this is great. What's that? Well, I'm looking at the uh, outline uh-huh. there, and it's last week's outline. Oh, did I print you off last week's? Yep. Oh, this is wild card, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got mine. I got an updated one. All right. Well, you can read everything <laughs> this week. Hey, Jeff, that's an old one. <laughs> I noticed. Okay. Anyways. Uh, I also did a top five based off of this. Okay. So. <laughs> Just go with that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, so Jeff's going to talk a little bit about the Oscars this year. Uh, about films that no one has ever seen except for Scab. I have seen all of them but two, and one of them I may not be able to see. Which oh, are no. they? If, if anybody can find we, When We Were Bullies and tell me where to stream it, I would absolutely love that. Otherwise, I need to go to Springdale at 7 o'clock Tonight. on Thursday. Oh. And I can see it there and hope it's one of the first couple of the ones because I've seen all the other ones. Okay, Jim. Go to Springdale on Thursday at 7 and just buy all the tickets ahead of time so Jeff can't see it. I'll call in a bomb threat. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, no, PS. no, I recommend don't call in bomb threats. Do not do that. <laughs> <laughs> you are the bomb, Jim. I, I don't want to get suspended again. That's so. true. That's true. And then the other one I haven't seen is one of the foreign films, uh, Luana Yak in the Classroom. Which That's the one I did see. I, I didn't know what a yak was. Um, How do you so, not know what a yak is? Well, I, I knew it was a mammal. Do you think you would know it if it was like a stuffed animal at the Comic Expo? I'm not sure that I would because <laughs> uh, Jen and I decided that we would draw what we thought yaks would look like. So we yeah, drew, I saw that. And mine looked kind of like a goat, which was clearly the closest because hers were a zebra and an ostrich. Did she not know what a yak is? Nobody knows what a yak is. Yeah, it's like uh, a llama thing. No, no. Oh, it's, wow, no. no. It's, <laughs> it's more like a, like a buffalo. Yeah, kind of, it's, it's like a, big, a buffalo. It's hairy. It's got like long horns. Like a buffalo with a goatee. Yes. So you, you never saw... Uh, like a bantha. Ren, Ren, and Stim- oh. Ren and Stimpy. I'm sure that if I had a lineup, I could have picked the yak out of the lineup. <laughs> but going in blind, I was thinking that it w- was something with big curly horns. But the Ren and Stimpy, had they had their... Uh, Order of the yak, the Yaksmen. Oh, <laughs> I remember that now. And they had a the, the unshaven yak day. They did have unshaven yak. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a lot of yak lineups? 
uh, on Ren and Stimpy. There oh, are. okay, okay, okay. No, sir, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> so Jeff is here. Scab's here for the uh, Oscars. Here, uh, we got a lot of other stuff to talk about too. Um, we're going to get diabetes this week. It, this is the week we are getting diabetes. Well, I'm going to say a lot of the, the food to test that came in isn't on the sweet side. It's the salty stuff. I don't think they really say, you know, ketchup potato chips are diabetes inducing. Well, the good news is, so our friends at the Pop Culture Cafe. woo Thank you, mate. They are awesome. The captain's over there. They sent us a box of Canadian-specific food. Jeff, Scab, have you seen this stuff? I have not. Well, maybe you should like our page more. Anyways, at the History of Bad <laughs> Ideas on Facebook, we have from them ketchup potato chips. That's only in Canada. Gourmet. Yeah, well, what just is that? Slap all dressed. Gourmet on everything. Assassins. What is that? He's yeah, ruffled re- chips. He's reading the French. French. Oh, <laughs> the all dressed are delicious. Uh, four bars of crunchy. It's sponge toffee, tiri apaji. It's Cadbury crunchies. It's it, it kind of scares me the cookies. I mean the candy kind of scares me. We have battling brands. Of ketchup flavored chips, we do. We have to pick which. What's that brand one? Is the best Lay's ketchup flavor? Oh, I'm going to say gourmet is probably better. Well, just because it has the word gourmet. Yes. Anybody can write gourmet. It means nothing. Just doing that on our outline right now. All right. It's a gourmet outline, Jeff. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got mine Nest- isn't because mine's last week's outline. Well, you know what? <laughs> Get a printer. Uh, <laughs> big tur. We got big turkey. Yeah. Turkish delight lucum. It's a candy. Oh, Turkish Delight's not good. Um, not really if sure. It's, you know, but British candy. I'm intrigued by this. Ooh, we, have, we have Hawkins Cheesies. It's a triple pack of corn uh, corn snacks of cheddar cheese. Uh-huh. Fromage cheddar. We I also see, I see the big boy logo on that bag. I'm not sure what it, what the big boy stands for. <laughs> uh, we also have. Hostess? Oh, Hostess. Hickory sticks, salt and vinegar. Um, they kind of look like onion straws? That's what they kind of look like. Whoa. What's that on that? We have Nestle's Coffee Crisp miniature candy bars. Oh. Peanut, that- peanut free, so. And we also have a couple other things going on here. Uh, let's see. My son, my oldest son, was really nice. He got us Peeps Marshmallows, which are kind of nasty to begin with. I like them. Uh, hot tamales, fierce cinnamon flavored. So that's kind of disgusting. Hot tamale, marshmallow peeps. Uh, we're going to be putting this on our Facebook page just to see how uh, us reacting to it. Um, Jim, or no, Scab, you're the guest this week. Uh, we're going to do, not do all the Canadian food this week, obviously. Plus, we can plug Pop Culture Cafe for the next six weeks. Uh, give us, pick with something that you would want us to try from the Canadians. Uh, the ketchup chips, the, Which gour- one? the gourmet. Oh, gourmet. Well, I think we're going to try them both because I think we do have to compare. I think we do have okay. to do a comparison. So we'll do the ketchup chips this week Okay, from Canada. Uh, what's your Oreos over there, Brian? Uh, it's just the, uh, the, the spring, spring. Uh, Easter designed. Okay. Nothing new, nothing It has fun. green uh, Are they icing? mint? No. No, it's just uh. regular flavored. So it's um, kind of like the, what was that one, the Game Hot of Thrones one? Or the Halloween yeah. ones yeah. with the orange Oh, yeah, cream. that's what it was. We just haven't had Oreos in a while, <laughs> so I figured I'd just grab them. It's been a good three weeks without Oreos. We might lose our sponsorship from Oreo. That's what I'm saying. I, and I, I do have the uh, Boston Cream Pop-Tarts. Oh, my God. I found those this week. Oh, so. my God. This is going to be amazing. Um, remember when we were a pop culture show? <laughs> now we became a snack show. I like it. Uh, I was just uh, pretty much motivated by, uh, uh, what's it, Kavanaugh. Oh, Tom oh, Kavanaugh. Yeah, Tom Kavanaugh. <laughs> you know, he was at the Cincinnati Comic Expo this past year. I know. That's what I heard him talk about his podcast, talking about. Are they doing that again this year? Uh, Cincinnati Comic Expo? Yeah. Uh, you know what? They are. You oh. know, uh, they are doing it se- September 23rd through 25th. You can get your tickets at CincinnatiComicExpo.com. Uh, you should show up. It's going to be great. Hobie's going to be there. Scab Jeff's going to be there. We can't announce that part yet, though, but he's going to be there. I, I heard, is it William Shatner? Uh, William Shatner is going to be there. Uh, Humberto Ramos 
the famous artist, uh, comic book artist, is going to be there. Uh, he's done Runaways, uh, Spectacular Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man, Wolverine. Um, he also uh, worked on Wildstorm. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so uh, he's worked with all of them. It's a great, great one there. So, so uh, very unconfirmed rumors that Patrick Stewart's going to be there. Uh, make it so. Yes. Uh, we can't confirm it. No, no, I, it's by rumors. I just started it. Yes, yes. Uh, what's more likely, him or Blake? Oh, I'm going Patrick Stewart. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Patrick Stewart all three days. <clears throat> <laughs> Blake one day. <laughs> Half of a day. <clears throat> one afternoon. Yes. <laughs> You said 11 a.m. I mean, I'm here. It's 2 p.m. What's wrong? <laughs> uh, actor, singer, and songwriter Paul Williams will be in attendance as well. Uh, he is known for a lot of Muppets uh, songs. Yes. I didn't know Paul Williams was still alive. He is, and he's going to be there since, uh, since Don't I Don't say that to him at the expo. <laughs> I won't, but hey, you're alive. You're alive I'll still. Just put, I'll just put it this way. The majority of people who we watch on... Uh, uh, the match game uh-huh. every afternoon. Most of them aren't still alive, and he was one of the guests that was recently on Match Game seventy four. Should we ask was. him in the panel that yes. wh- Paul? <laughs> Did he How enjoy was... Match Game? Yes. What's his opinions of Gene Rayburn? One of our hobbies. <laughs> just focus the entire interview on Match, match Game. game. <laughs> one, just the one episode. <laughs> Do you remember when you were on it in nineteen seventy four? Yes. Okay, so let's talk about that episode. Uh, <laughs> you said this to the answer. What were you thinking about there? <laughs> <laughs> let's reenact that. <laughs> I'll meet Gene Rayburn. <laughs> we're going to need one of those microphones. In. Like, did he have the long one? Well, yeah, Jeff, the long get up here. You're the contestant to Holly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if I was a meatloaf, what? oh, I thought you meant matchmaker, not the match game. I'm sorry, Paul. I'm wrong well, game. Well, there was a meatloaf question today on, uh, <laughs> on match the game. match game. Whoa. Um, you, you brought these a live thing. I just want to give a nice shout out to uh, Rex Chapman and all the work he did to plan and prep for his uh, analysis of the NCAA tournament when he congratulated Providence of making the Sweet 16 for the first time since uh, Pete Gillen was her head coach. Rip Pete. Pete Gillen? Yep. Pete Gillen's still alive. Is he? Yes. <laughs> He's an analyst on CBS Sports. <laughs> Different Xavier, uh, former Xavier head coach. Yes, he, went, he goes, oh, I got confused. I was thinking Skip Prosser. I mean, they did take the moral <laughs> high ground by getting Sean Miller. Anyways, moving on. Uh, John Glover's going to be there. John Glover, Gremlins 2, the voice of the Riddler. Uh, he was in Fear of the Walking Dead. Uh, I'm excited about that one. Smallville. Yep, there you go. Uh, and yeah, uh, Adrian Barbeau is going to be there. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. Oh, saw her on Match Game. Are they going to have like a Match Game specific panel? It will be now. You should you Barbeau. should do one of your your polls where how many of the people who listen to our podcast have heard of the the, the, match the game. game show <laughs> Match Game. game. <laughs> Did they reboot that with Snoop Dogg? And no, Stewart. No, Snoop Dogg was the Joker's wife. Oh, okay. When I did that wait. go off the air? Match Game. Like, 70s? Uh, I think 79, 80 was when that run went off, and then they brought back in about 84 the Match Game Hollywood Squares Hour, oh. where they did a half hour of Match Game followed by a half hour of was it still Squares. Was it still Gene Rayburn? It was Gene Rayburn. Gene Rayburn and John Bowser Bauman were, uh, you know, hosted. That's a horrible name. <laughs> <laughs> what's your, what's going to be your game show name? John Bowser Bauman. Well, actually... <laughs> Bowser was the name that he had from Sha Na Na, and that's why oh. most people know him. He yes. went by, I guess, John Bauman when he was hosting the game show. Okay. Did anyone most call him Bowser on the show? Probably. Hey, Bowser, what's up? Don't ever Is fucking call me. Is he still alive? I don't know. Gene Rayburn? No. no John oh. Bowser. <laughs> Uh, also, <laughs> we'll also, see if he's going to be at the comic con. <laughs> so, <laughs> so can, can one of our panels be picture. a just match game? Yes. Where we set up with uh, we have two rows of like four seats. I, I'm fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> and we get the celebrities to come up. Uh, screw <laughs> signing autographs <laughs> on the floor and making your money. We need you to come up here for our match game. Hey, Brian, <laughs> you're the intern. Make it so. Mm, okay. Come on, that's your job. That's what we talked about. You want to get promoted? Come on. Let's go. How would that not be news? Like these people who were on the match game before actually coming back and getting together. Let me talk to Andrew about this. I'm going to try. 
Uh, <laughs> yes, John Bauman is still alive. How old is he? Uh, 74 years old. 74 years young. No, I hate that expression. <laughs> And the third picture on here yes. is a picture of him on the match game <laughs> ah. talking to Gene Rayburn. Ah. <laughs> Some nice slick back hair. Uh, <laughs> Ryan Kincaid, uh, he, artist, he's going to be there. Also, artist Keith Williams. They were not on match game. No. <laughs> and this, this person was not either. Actress from Harry Potter, Bonnie Wright. She was not on the match game. Um, so there you go. But now, granted, they did reboot the match game as an evening show mm-hmm. that they do what every what spring or something with. Is it well, good? it was Alec Baldwin hosting. I doubt <laughs> they still will have him if they bring it back. Well, he Tru- shoot is he the in person. Trouble or something? No, not, he not never necessarily. T- he never pulled the trigger, except for when the trigger went off. The trigger went off, but I never pulled it. Did you hold the trigger, the gun? Yes. So you, how did it go off? Well, this other guy came over and pulled the trigger while I was holding it. He should have just put the gun in his coat and said, I'm allowed to carry this. <laughs> well, they weren't filming in Ohio. Oh, I'll get my bad. <laughs> or Indiana. <laughs> so anyways. Down the hall. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Uh, so yeah, so uh, get your tickets to Cincinnati Comic Expo September 23rd through 25th at Duke Energy Convention Center. Get your tickets at CincinnatiComicExpo.com every week. What an outstanding plug for that. <laughs> <laughs> we just talked 10 minutes about it I think that was a great plug Yeah But we talked about the match game <laughs> Not enough I think we need more For 8 minutes of, I think of that Matchmaker, matchmaker Make me a match Well we got four of us You could be the host We could do a match game Okay everybody uh, Scab Jeff I don't know how to play match game The word <laughs> Have the, you ever seen match game? The word is he right, doesn't know how to play match. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's a password. Brian just left. The word is potato. That's password. Go, Jeff. <laughs> that definitely isn't how match. Okay, Jeff, play. ready? Baked. Goods. <laughs> Load it. Potato. Yes, you got it! Yes. Did we just play match game? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Ah, okay. You have to have a question like, little Johnny went to school... And he gave his teacher... Gonorrhea. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's a baby. Like, it's like Cards Against Humanity, except for you can say whatever you want instead of playing a specific card. Okay. Dumb Dora is so <laughs> dumb. How <laughs> dumb is she? I don't know. I <laughs> okay, ready? Let me try it again. Jeff, okay, you ready? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Oak. <laughs> Elm. <laughs> maple. Trees. Name of trees. That's it. Yes. Good job. Okay, so now we're playing Pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I feel like I'm getting this. I'm getting this. No, okay. no, you're still not even close. I, uh, I don't know about that. What is trees? Yes, <laughs> names of trees. <laughs> leaves, leaves. It's leaves, isn't it? <laughs> leaves of grass. What is leaves? <laughs> <laughs> Wood. Now we're just naming things. Oak Island. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. What is Oak Island? I love lamp. I don't know. What is it? I don't know. But I know there's buried wood there. <laughs> Are we okay on the computer there, Jeff? <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. You just had me. <laughs> oh, that buried wood joke <laughs> makes me laugh every time. It doesn't get old. <laughs> Except when it gets old. <laughs> uh, okay. So anyways, welcome to the show, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> dumb door is so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's an actual question. <laughs> if you've seen the match game, you recognize this. Dumb Dora is so dumb. And then the audience yells, how dumb is she? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. We're going to try this first, and then we'll get to the Canadian chips in a bit. I hate your son. Yes, my son loves this. Um, I'm looking forward to this. Cinnamon-flavored uh, marshmallow peeps? I'm all for it. Okay. I have nothing to drink, so I'm not going to try. That's not an acceptable answer. <laughs> uh, we are doing hot tamale. What? You're not trying it? I have nothing to drink. What if it's terrible? So just tough shit. Just, <laughs> just looking at the back of this. I like beer in the fridge out there. Yeah. At the nutrition facts. Mm-hmm. Uh, that sounds good. Four, four, four chicks equal 110 calories. That's not bad. According to the label. That's one Oreo, usually. Four chicks. Four chicks is one serving? Correct. Wow, that's a big serving. Uh, I like the ho-hos. The good news is... (laughs) Two plus (laughs) ho-hos per (laughs) serving. The good news is no fat, 
No cholesterol, no sodium, no, uh, only 10% of your carbohydrates. They're pure sugar. Uh, total sugar is 48% of your daily intake. Um, so, Not my daily intake. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you got over there? Sam Adams what? Oktoberfest. Oktoberfest. I can't condone that if that's healthy still, uh, if that's still good. You uh, can't condone it yes. if it's healthy? You know, that's enough out of you, Brian. Is this from, like, poker night four years ago? Maybe. Maybe. Okay, so here we go. Hot tamales. It looks good to me, Jeff. Yeah, it probably is. I think it's like a year old. It's in a bottle. Okay, so I'm going to take two of these. No, yeah. no, you get the row that you jabbed with uh, the pad. Yeah, you get the ink flavored. <laughs> I don't one. think I want all of those. Too bad. That's a serving. No, that's five. That's oh, five. Okay, you're allowed to take one away. There you go, Jeff. Oh. Did I just break the computer? Yep. Computer's okay. dead now. Okay, these things look hot. They and look tamale like. Oh, God. That's marshmallow, Jason. I despise peeps, just to let everyone know ahead of time. My son loves that you're doing this. Why? Oh, even the inside is that red. Part. I just figured the outside what? was coated in red. Jim, how is it? I really wouldn't call it fierce. It says fierce cinnamon. Are they hot? Are they hot? No. Anybody hot? Really? Well, that's disappointing. Jeff, you're the food connoisseur. What do you think? They're actually less hot than a hot tamale uh, candy. Really? Oh, this is disappointing. Ooh, Ryan? I, like them. I, oh, could I got a little them. bit of heat when I stuffed the whole thing in my mouth. <laughs> That's what she said. Yes, she did. Brian, you're, you love peeps. How do you think? Oh, they're great. <laughs> you got three more to eat. I got two in front of me, and that's it. Maybe. Je- scab? It just tastes like cinnamon. Like, it's it's good. It's, oh. Well, this is disappointing. Cinnamon. I think the heat is more in the marshmallow. Like cinnamon on a... The inside. Eh, I didn't really get but much There's not a lot. So would you eat these again? Never. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't buy them. Okay. But but you let me buy them. Thank you. No, you let your child buy them. Yeah, you're, yeah that's true. That's true. Oh, gosh. I think the eyeball came off. Is that Okay. Well, I hope that's the eyeball. Otherwise, I got some little brown thing in my peep. That's a gnat. No, otherwise, I got blank. <laughs> <laughs> otherwise, I got blank. <laughs> Syphilis. Okay. Well, there we go. We'll be back in a See, little bit. He knows how to play I match got match game. game. <laughs> we'll be so back. right now, his two answers were <laughs> gonorrhea and syphilis. <laughs> no, no. He said gonorrhea down there. Okay. Well, there we go. We'll be back in a little bit. What, Brian, are you, what are you doing? I was watching us live on Facebook. You can't. <laughs> That's very meta. Oh, man, now we're on a loop. Okay, we'll be back in a little bit here to try the Canadian chips ketchup. No. But should, do you know what? I have a picture of him looking at it and like, when's that? That's now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. What's now. not good is hot peeps and beer. <laughs> yeah, October. Oktoberfest beer and hot peeps. It, yeah, that beer just tastes like garbage now, doesn't it? <laughs> it tastes the maybe if it were like a like a Christmas beer, or like a cinnamon, something that's or an Easter yes. beer. <sighs> yeah, put a but peep no. in there, or like yeah, <laughs> maybe like a, uh, a Brink King Cake beer. Oh, <laughs> that would taste very good with a peep. I would think. I do say. I will say it does taste like a hot tamale. Like, it's not hot, but, like, it does taste like the hot tamales. You mean cinnamon? Yeah, <laughs> but a little bit more, like, tamales have their own flavors. Hot tamales. How many t- hot tamales have you had? Quite a few. Okay, I'm don't, just going to keep saying hot tamales. Don't I look like the candy connoisseur? This episode is sponsored by Hot Tamales. And Peeps. And get yours at the Cincinnati Comic Expo, September 23rd through 25th. We'll be playing Match Game. I, does it? Do we have to be sponsored by Peeps? I'm not a big fan. My mom likes them when they're stale. No. Like, she keeps them out in the air and then makes them sell and then likes them. Well, your mom's weird. Well, in that case, yes. Yes. Yes, she is. They're better when they're fresh. Yeah, I agree. And soft. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> two is enough. I two really is too one. many. Uh, uh, an entire peep. I'll eat the entire How many peep. have you had, Jeff? One. Oh, okay. So you got three, two more that you can eat after that one, then. Oh, yeah, to get my yeah, to daily, get your daily uh, intake of sugar. Uh, let's see here. We had a poll this week. We did? Yeah, we did. Um, oh, I voted on this. Good. Did you? I did. I voted oh. on this, too. Me, too. Brian, I don't know what the problem is here, but I think you need to be a little Jeff, bit more did you vote on this today. poll? I did. 
You seem a little negative down there. We all voted on the poll. It's a good day. Yeah. In honor of Miami Town. Oh, I'm sorry. At Miami Town, Jeff is Scab Jeff's uh, Twitter. Uh, in honor of Jeff being a guest on this week's podcast, what is the worst film to win the Oscars for Best Picture? The Oscar for Best Picture. Uh, we had How Green Was My Valley. That was also the name of the porn. Uh, Crash. Greatest Show on Earth. Name of the porn. Uh, and Chicago. Not the name of the porn. No. <laughs> no. Name of the, the <laughs> crime. Never mind. Um, so with the, the HBO having the whole uh, 31 days of Oscar, I was watching some of the best picture winners that I hadn't mm-hmm. seen before. And there were some that may be worse than Which one? Show on Give me Earth. some more. What? Gigi. Have you ever seen Gigi? Uh-uh. Um, Is that Ben Affleck? No, <laughs> that's what that's what I thought too. <laughs> oh, Geely, Geely. <laughs> but it, it's about this this guy, regular, late twenties, thirty, uh, and he falls in love. I think it's either his fourteen year old niece or what? his fourteen year old. And how old is this guy? Sister, th- at least late twenties, and they fall in love, and and then finally she's like, okay, and they get married at the end. Uh, but she's fourteen. Um. That's how they present it. She's still in grade school. Grade I school? I think what? is how they present it. The, you sure you weren't watching Serbian film? I'm looking this up. Oh, the, you got to look up the, the, the theme song, uh, Thank Heaven for Little Girls. Oh, I've heard that song before. <laughs> Where he's oh. talking. <laughs> All right, so. This movie did not age well. Oh, no, no. <laughs> and then All I right. watched several other ones, did and they Paul all Williams had this, this pedophile <laughs> background did Paul to it. That song? All right, so this movie was released in 1958. Oh, it was a different time back then. There was no pedophile Here back is then. the synopsis. <laughs> Weary of the conventions of a Parisian society, a rich playboy and a youthful courtesan in training. Youthful. In training. In training. <laughs> youthful courtesan in training enjoy a platonic friendship which may not stay platonic for long. Because she's 14. <laughs> you should not have a friendship for that. <laughs> But it wouldn't have a platonic friendship. No, no. I'm pretty sure they were related, too. I, I wasn't sure how the... Was it directed by Woody Allen? Uh, uh, it was not. Oh. But, but everyone needs to listen to Thank Heaven for Little Girls. No. no. It's, uh, were you disturbed watching this? I, it, was, it was a little creepy. And then, yeah. I, and then just, uh, what's the Liza Minnelli big one? Uh, the cabaret? Cabaret. Oh. That one had a... Uh, was it Cabaret? Cabaret didn't win uh, an Oscar. It might have been nominated. But. Uh, it, it won a, a bunch of Oscars, oh, not thing. Best Picture. Not Best Picture, okay. Uh, maybe it wasn't Cabaret, but there was another one where there was... No, it wasn't that. It was... Uh, I forget what it was, but it was about this guy who had to be... Oh, it was uh, the great Ziegfeld. Oh, yeah. You're, that's an old, old one. And he was... Uh, at the beginning, he's there, and there's this girl, maybe five or six, but she grows up as he grows up, and then there's a little bit of a love story between the two of them. What the hell is going on in Hollywood? <laughs> she grows up as he like, grows old. Well, he's, <laughs> he's maybe in his 50s or 60s by the time that she's of age, which was apparently it? is like 14 in the 30s. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought Hollywood was on the up and up. I was surprised by that. Um... Back to this poll real quick. Uh, let's see. How Green Was My Valley was gets 6% of the vote. Uh, we had Chicago with 10% of the vote in third place. And then uh, it was a closer one than I thought because I didn't think many people knew Greatest Show on Earth. Crash beat Greatest Show on Earth 52% to 32%. Now, some other... It's people didn't... The people who didn't vote for The Greatest Show on Earth never watched The Greatest Show on Earth. It was pretty exciting. I watched it two years ago. Not the whole thing, because I couldn't watch it all. It was on TV. It was the Oscars thing, like on AMC or whatever. And uh, I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. It's bad. It's about the Ringling Brothers, basically. Well, it's a circus. Well, it takes place at a circus. Yeah. It's not necessarily about the circus. It's 
just the drama that goes on between people's lives with the circus as I think the one scene was like 20 minutes of them just showing a circus performance. Oh, yeah, they did do that a lot. That was awful. Um, That's what I hated about old Hollywood when they just used movies as an excuse to show like a a performance, a song and dance, or like I said, a circus act. Yeah. Um, Go watch The Greatest Showman instead. I I like that one. Yes. No, I hated The Greatest Showman. It doesn't like you either. I mean, oh, it's much, much, much better than The Greatest Showman. Yeah, if you want to watch something. If you want to talk about the circus, watch Dumbo. I don't know. No, <laughs> no, no, no. The live action version. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. It's better than the cartoon. Uh, so give you some other animated op- film. Whatever. Give you some other ones here. Uh, up for worst best pictures. Okay, that everyone. Marty from 1955. Anyone know that one? No. I'm aware of it. The Artist from 2011. Oh, yes. I love that movie. Fuck that movie. Dances with Wolves. Jason, have you ever Ooh. did you watch it? I uh, like that. Yeah, I did. I yeah. saw it back in the nineteen thirties when it was called a talk. No, no, you didn't. It was just black and white, so you're like, oh, this movie sucks. Yep, and it was silent. Never, and never we're watched cutting it. Edge. Hey, never we're in America, Jim. It. I can fucking tell you my uh, opinion if I want. Your your uneducated opinion, which is pretty much about everything you talk about. You know what, Jim? You're suspended <laughs> again. Damn it. Brian, take him out. <laughs> I will not. Oh. Hey Jason, you need to stop being so negative over there. I'm sorry. Dances with Wolves. How about that? I'm sorry. Bro. I enjoyed that film. I I, st- I saw it not too long ago, and I didn't I didn't hate it. Uh, Number I two, I didn't think it held up when I saw it several what, years ago. What part didn't like the? Uh, probably Kevin Costner's acting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but he was awesome in For the Love of the Game. He was. Uh, if he, he's he, doing sports, he can movies, do baseball movies. He's well, decent golf. in Yellowstone. Yeah. John C. Riley's great as a catcher. He is. Uh, Greatest catcher ever. We are the best. I don't remember him as a catcher in Dances with Wolves. He was. Uh, he was in the background. Hey, I'm over here. <laughs> he was, in throw the, me the, the ball. Corn, in the cornfield. Yeah. yeah. Throw me the ball. No, he, 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 was was the rye, he was in the rye field. Uh, uh, number, uh, let's see. That's <laughs> boo. My Fair Lady <laughs> is another one. Is a bad one? Yeah. Green Book. Uh, that did not hold up, people say. Birdman. Did not hold up. Well, Birdman was an excellent movie. So Birdman anybody was who's like that under Green there. Book didn't hold up from three years ago. Yeah. <laughs> didn't hold up. <laughs> it's it's uh, uh, I can Gigi, see. 1958. <laughs> oh, uh, does not hold up. Yeah. Seriously, <laughs> just, just pull up the lyrics uh, for that song. I w- okay, what is it? Thank uh, heavens thank for, heaven little for little girls. All right. I'm, I, see, will, I will apologize ahead of time for what I'll probably regret reading. You're going Moon, to be a little moonlight? sick of your stomach, aren't you? There? Hold on, hold on. And it's Here's not the... going to be the peeps. What's he doing? No, La La Land was, but then they had to remove it. <laughs> ah! Thank God for little girls. Thank heaven. Thank, Thank heaven. heavens. Okay, so here's the best part. At its, heart, at its heart, this is a movie about an incredibly handsome and wealthy man whose primary problem is that he's bored with his life of ease and splendor. Splendor? Aren't we all? In other words, he's not oh, the God. easiest protagonist to care about. Hold on. Today, Gigi is best remembered for its original song, Thank Heaven for Little Girls. That's the only thing they said that's wrong with it. <laughs> oh, God. American Beauty. <laughs> American Beauty. Uh, uh, well, out of good. Africa. I never saw Out of Africa. Oh, my right. parents rented that. That was the most boring uh, film. Another... Uh, American Beauty, another movie about underage uh, yep. <laughs> relationships. Do you think Hollywood has a problem? <laughs> Kevin Spacey doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Kevin Spacey. Uh, Cimarron, Lord of the uh, Cinnabons? No, 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 no. 1931? No? Cimarron? I think Cimarron is the only movie to mm-hmm. win Best Western. That's a uh, great hotel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. The Great Ziegfeld? <laughs> there you go. Well, uh, there's like, uh, it goes on, there's like uh, 20 minutes of plot, and then there's a dance number that literally goes on for 45 minutes. <laughs> and then there's some more plot, and then a dance number that goes on for like 20 minutes, and then a little more plot. Well, and, back then they had to make films that were three hours long, minimum. Yeah. So how do we yeah, do and it? Then the intermission and most comes. of these are only 80 minute movies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here we go. Last two, uh, this is from Screen Crush Driving Miss Daisy. Uh, that doesn't hold up. And then 
around the world in 80 days. I've heard a lot about that. Yeah, that's not good. That's one that I just watched uh, in the last couple of weeks as well. And it was bad, wasn't it? It was pretty bad. Uh, here's it was the, like no, showing off each different country no and very in racistly, yeah. including America. What would you say? No Shakespeare in Love on that list? No, I have seen that on others. I don't think Shakespeare in Love's that bad. Yeah, See, I think the biggest problem with a lot of these things is people are angry that some other movie didn't win. Well, Not necessarily the movie... That did win. It was a terrible. Gigi movie. was the year that Vertigo came out, and that wasn't even nominated for Best Picture, is what they said. Well, it wasn't that good. Uh, American. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So around the world in eighty days. This is the response. The one. The writer. I have to assume there were no other movies released in 1956, <laughs> so the Academy had no choice but to give the Oscar bowl, the Oscar the Oscar for Best Picture out of sheer necessity to this film. Well, you know, we thought that was going to happen in 2020. We thought Bad Boys for Life was going to win. You know what? Nothing else was nominated. Time but out. They forced other things in there. Jeff, from now on, Best Picture. Bad Boys for Life. Okay? <laughs> From now on, change approved. It won an Oscar in 2020. It was hosed. It, wa- it was hosed. <laughs> Definitely hosed. Um, no. I think well, about- I think Doolittle came out that same year. So oh! Between those two. And Trolls World Tour. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that was number one at the box office for the whole Remember summer. back in 2020 <laughs> when we did box office news and there was one movie that just had like 600 bucks? Another one did 400. <laughs> those were good days. Not really good days. No, no, those were bad days. Um, but Look, I have four hundred bucks. I could go and be the entire <laughs> audience. The, the entire uh, and the best part the was they were only doing drive-in uh, tallies, so it was only at drive-ins. <laughs> so Brian, how are those lyrics looking? Uh, very uncomfortable. <laughs> go ahead, sing it. I'm not singing it. I'm reading it. Okay, I can give you a beat. No, <laughs> I'm not, I think I, I think it starts out just wonderfully. <laughs> Each time I see a little girl of five or six or seven, I can't resist a joyous urge to smile and say, thank heaven for little girls. <laughs> oh, wow. Maybe he meant like when he sees five, six, or seven of them. This is no. both at the beginning of the movie and at the end of the movie. It bookends the film Gigi. <laughs> for little girls get bigger every day. Thank heaven for little girls. <laughs> they grow up in the most delightful way. Those little eyes, so helpless and appealing, when they were flashing, send you crashing. When I'm driving my creepy van down the road. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, let's see. Send yeah, you don't want to misinterpret those. Saw that when they were flashing, send you crashing through the ceiling. Thank heaven for little girls. It, it's thank, worse than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> thank heaven for them all. I'm going. No be... matter where, no matter oh, who. Wow. Without them, what would little boys do? <laughs> thank heaven. Thank heaven. Thank heaven for little girls. So, who, who wrote this? Um, we, we need to it is a name. song by Maurice Chevalier. Okay, so Chevalier. Maurice Chevalier. How many Maurice lists? Was, how many uh, <laughs> registries was he on? Because <laughs> uh, I'm a little scared. It's okay. He's French. Oh, so I apologize to everyone for doing that. Jim, can you come back next week? Because I think Brian just got suspended for those words. And, and if you go on the internet, it is well worth. Listening to that actually sung and sung oh. <laughs> because it is so. Remember to listen to our uh, intro, or tells us that these aren't all of our <laughs> opinions. <laughs> opinions. <laughs> these are, no, 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 no. Oh, well, that was depressing. I think it's time for some ketchup chips. Let's get some ketchup chips going, Jim. I like it. I like it. So first we'll start with... Should we start with the non-gourmet first? Let me go live here, Jim. Hold on. Let me go Jeff live. is going to hate these. <laughs> yes, they are f- chips with flavor sprinkles on them. I will not like them. <laughs> Sam, it I said... It smells like ketchup. Now, granted, I'm assuming it's probably just like eating french fries dipped in ketchup is what they're going for, I'm assuming. So we have competition this week. We have... Oh, jeez. Hello. We have... Gourmet potato chips, ketchup. Let's try those first, and then Lay's is going to come in. You, it's kind of like could could Grand be the little shop that could? Let's see. It looks like a that looks like a uh, store bought brand, right? Mm-hmm. Like it, it won't be like a big mass producer. Let's see. What do you think, Jimmy? 
These it are what the chips are. Definitely like. smells a lot like ketchup. Yeah, I'm not a huge ketchup fan to begin with. Brian, what do you think? Better than the peeps? Much better than the peeps. It's a potato chip that tastes like ketchup. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there's really nothing more you can say about it. Like, Actually, it's, it's not as bad as I was expecting. I'm not a big ketchup fan, but those aren't bad. Yeah. I'm not upset I mean, by that. Kind of, I guess the vinegar part of the ketchup is really coming out, so mm-hmm. it kind of tastes like a vinegar chip. Oh, not bad. How is that with your beer, Jeff? I I thought that I was waiting for both of them to well, test no, them. Try this one first. But what if I forget what it tastes like? This is only available you can in Canada. Try it again. Look at that. So calories. Oh shoot. Okay, good. It's not only in French. It's in English too. Uh, let's see. Nutrition facts. Calories: two hundred and seventy for twenty-five chips. Sweet. I only had two. Fat or lipids is twenty-three percent. Carbohydrates is seven percent. Uh, no cholesterol. Sodium is 15%, uh, and potassium is 13%. So there you go. And iron is Man, 4%. I get a lot of my potassium out of these. Yeah. I will say, those are not bad. Well, ketchup has a lot of potassium. You think this is made with... Oh, made in Canada. Look at that. Well, yeah. Shocking. I would yeah. have never have guessed that. Well, you have to say it in French, too. Oh, made in Faout, Au, Canada. Does that make sense? <laughs> Nope. Okay, now we're on to the Lay's. Let me see that bag, Jeff. Jeff, let me see that bag. Let's see. I did like how Pop Culture Cafe got us the big bag of the store bought, but then it went to Lay's like, eh, we're just going to give you the small uh, gas station bag. Well, there's probably about the same amount in each bag. That one's just full of air. Is this the the Lay's one here, Jim? Yes. Okay. Let's see. These go significantly better with the beer than the peeps did. (laughs) What do you think? What do you think? It's a big day. I think these are a little more flavorful, or I just got some skimpy chips in the first one. In the the gourmet ones? I think the Lay's has a little more ketchup, Okay, but I like the gourmet better. Like the gourmet? Okay. I think I like, I like the gourmet better. Brian? Yeah, these taste like if you got the watery part of the ketchup. Oh. oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's like, not I'm good not for anyone. No, right. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's what the Lay's ones taste like. If you Jim's get... going back for the gourmet ones. But when you start to squirt and the water dribbles out first. and lay... Let's see how yeah. many calories this is. This is the Lay's. I bet they'd be very similar. Uh, calories, 310 for the package. I would say... That's more than 25 chips in that package. Yeah. yeah. Uh, fat, le petites, 29%. Cholesterol, zero. Sodium, 16%. Uh, carbohydrates, 10%. And, uh, Jeff, vitamin C, 20%. 20% of vitamin C. How much potassium? Uh, three grams. So, uh, oh, calcium is 2%. So, good for your bones. Yeah, I thought I'd taste milk in there. So, everybody went to their drinks. Uh, Scab, what do you think about it? Wait, which one was your favorite? The gourmet. Gourmet? So, that's the unanimous there? I haven't tried the Lay's one. I don't, I don't like ketchup. But yeah. the, the gourmet ones weren't bad. I think it is the little extra vinegar. Like, I, well, when, he said, when he said that, it didn't. Mm-hmm. Can we, a little bit later on, can we try the Big Turk? Can we try the Big Turk? I guess we can. <laughs> uh, Denise, uh, Nisi just said, ha, you guys are going to die. Gluttony is a sin. <laughs> that table, oh, my Lord. Oh, it gets worse. There's stuff over there. <laughs> Send more Jolly Ranchers. Yeah, we need Jolly Ranchers. Send Doug. Over. Yeah. Like, gluttony would be my only son. Where is Doug? Co-Canadian of the Year. You know, your Canadian of the Year has done a great job. I don't know where ours is. Well, apparently you own a Canadian of the Year. Well, not, not own. That's the I way you said your Canadian of the Year. His wife is Co-Canadian of the Year. I realize that, but you act like, you know, yeah. he's the only one that can interact with her. He's the only well, one. Well, she can enter. Your Canadian of the Year. And honestly, once she listens to this and hears what I just read, she probably will make me sleep on the front porch. (laughs) I I don't blame you. Um, Just thank heavens for little girl. I'm just. You know, the good news is she uh, she she actually interacts with Brian, intern, and the Harp Twins, so it works out fine. It's perfectly fine. Great, great band. Should definitely. Um, let's see. Uh, he said, uh, you should definitely eat something. He said, these, 
Top uh, Pop Culture Cafe just wrote in, these are the dollar store brand. Wow. Oh, we'll wait for dollar store. Yeah, I'm going for the dollar store over Lay's. Now, do they have they... baked Lay's versions with ketchup? Ooh. I don't know. That's <laughs> Baked gourmet? I don't know. Next week, we're going to be trying more Canadian stuff. Uh, are we trying Big Turk later? Is that yeah. okay, Jim? Okay. Mm-hmm. And we're going to need a palate cleanser. Uh, dear God. <laughs> I don't know. The Big Turk worries me. Look at what that. was the Big Turk again? Uh, natural flavors and no artificial colors. Oh, C O L O U R S. Learn Canadian. how to spell Canada. It's uh, Romus Naturos et Sans Colorants Artificiales. I think that was very French of me. I don't. Uh, it's Turkish <laughs> I think delight. That was the opposite of French. Could, could, could you maybe tell us what the candy bar itself is? It has oh. sugars, modified cornstarch, cocoa butter, milk ingredients, unsweetened Apparently chocolate. Apparently, it's a black Turkish carrot delight, concentrate with natural flavor. Not good. Soy le- uh, lecithin, citric acid, salt. Yeah. May contain peanuts, tree nuts, eggs. Is anyone allergic to tree nuts or peanuts? Penis? What? Uh, it is Big Turk. Uh-huh. I do not like peanuts. I am not allergic. Okay. We will be back. Okay. Uh, we will be back for the live crowd on Facebook. Sorry. Follow us at History of Bad Ideas. Uh, let's see here. Jeff, you didn't know you were going to be eating this much, did you, tonight? Candies. I did not. Those are what Turkish delights are, if you've ever had. They're kind of like... I do not a, recognize those. Okay. They're kind of like a gelatiny type thing oh. with powder sprinkled on them. And mm-hmm. mm. for some reason in, uh, what's that, uh, Chronicles of Narnia, one of the kids is willing to sell out his siblings for Turkish delight. Why? I don't know. Does it's he like, hate his siblings? Uh, uh, he, 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 he must. must. <laughs> I would sell Jeff out for Necco wafers. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> man, you hate me that much? Hey, hey wow. intern. Yeah. Might, that was a very good astute. I, right? I like that. That is like the watery ketchup. Yeah. yeah. I like the grand better. Okay. Okay, the third picture on the Turkish delight. Uh... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Is it about little girls? Uh, they're not so oh, little hello. anymore. Oh, hello. Oh, Okay. Moving on, um, Brian, you want to do some listener feedback over there? I would love to. Okay. We all know what that sound means. It's it, time for the bomb listener feedback. Thank Are you, you okay, Jeff? Yeah, that was fun. I think Jeff's dying. I'm not sure what that was, but I don't know. That know. was the bomb. I, I don't okay. know if I'd describe that as fun. <laughs> I, it doesn't sound fun. It sounds alarming. And maybe a little painful. Um, anyway, so after uh, this week, we're going to be sponsored by To Catch a Predator. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Chris Hansen. Why don't you have a seat right there? It won Best Picture. <laughs> That doesn't mean anything. <laughs> you know, I keep saying stop watching Spider-Man. <laughs> stop talking about Gigi. <laughs> or G. Lee. Either one. Either one. I mean, at this point, I would take G. Lee over <laughs> Gigi. <sighs> Anyways. That just ruins the name of my cat. Gigi? Yes. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say, I didn't think Change it to G. Lee. <laughs> you know, it's a bad film when you rather see G. Lee. I'm going to change it to, like, Princess Poopy Butt. Perfect. <laughs> it's better than GG. Yeah. PPB. <laughs> what do you got there, Brian? What do you got? Well, we start off with that one guy. Number one fan? Doug. Can't give yourself a nickname? Seven. Dad. A- Ape hands. Co-Canadian of the year. Nah, maybe. Yeah. Got to show up, Doug. Wow. Uh, Doug would like to know our thoughts on the new Miss Marvel trailer. Looks amazing. I haven't seen it. Uh, it doesn't look amazing. It looks fun, though. It's a very more kid-centric superhero. Um, Since she is a kid? Yep. Yeah. Um, people online are complaining because they, they... Jim, I know Weird. People, I know. Shocking. Jim, they're complaining online. Okay, ready? Because they changed some of her superpowers. Oh, no. Um, the superpowers were what made her character... Mm-hmm. You know, the the way she interacts and deals with the powers are what made the character who oh, it is. Okay. You're essentially just wiping out the characterization that these these uh, writers uh, work so hard to put out there. Well, I, think I, I well, think I saw this argument online. 
Well, uh, that's how I found out about it. Oh, okay. Right online. <laughs> well, because of uh, the new different powers you have, they don't think it's realistic. Oh, that's <laughs> right. The uh, the one theory is because they're bringing Fantastic Four into the universe, and she's stretchy is one of her powers. Uh, I don't even know what all her powers are. And they're like, well, they're taking that away because they want Mr. Fantastic to have it. Who the fuck cares? I think they're taking that away because it's a very expensive uh, CGI power to mm. use for a television show. Disney's like, we have money, but we don't, we're not using it on Disney Plus right now on this film, on this series. Uh, okay. Uh, Moon Knight starts in a couple of weeks, Joe. Oh, did, did anybody see the uh, the high school dance troupe going through uh, downtown Disney, like on like a little parade? Mm-mm. Oh my! What they do? Um, did they serve people? Oh, I heard about this. They, it was uh, they have Native what, Ameri- anti Native American. It was they have what? Like, they have like fringe, like on their uh, little, yeah. their outfits and everything, and it was completely. Uh, like part of the things is like you scalp them. It, it was, it's who horrible. approved that? Um, I uh, Disney immediately apologized <laughs> and said that they did not have yeah, this they... in the <laughs> in the rehearsals. We had no idea this was going on. I think they were from Texas, right? Yeah, they were from oh, Texas. Oh, shocker! <laughs> they were like, "Oh, we pay tribute to the Peter Pan uh, film." Oh yeah, go ahead out there, whatever you want to do with Peter Pan. Oh shoot, we had some Native Americans in there, and we didn't treat them nice either in that <laughs> film. Was Ricky Schroeder leading that parade? <laughs> Dean Kane. <laughs> hey, Dean Kane might be. There. No, no. <laughs> no. No. Oh, man. Okay, keep going, uh, Brian. So that's what we think about the new Miss Marvel trailer. <laughs> uh, we got from the Superiority Complex podcast. Uh, they would like to know who was cooler in his prime Chow Yun Fat or Steve McQueen? Well, Jeff, Scab, you go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I... Jeff, you go ahead first, then. If he's... I'm going to say Steve McQueen's prime was before I was alive, or I was incredibly young, one or the other, and so I really don't know how cool he was, although everyone seems to think he was cool, but I didn't get it when I went back and saw stuff. Unless we're talking about Steve McQueen, the director... Of like twelve years a slave and what? I'll go with him. He's in his prime. Yes. Is he the red car from Cars? Steve McQueen. Yes. 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 No. 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 That's uh. That's lightning. Lightning. <laughs> but Steve is his real name. Lightning's the nickname. I think. I think you're right. <laughs> I think that's who they were basing. Yeah, I'm sure it was. <laughs> yeah. The password is <laughs> purple. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Barney. Eggplant. <laughs> yes! Oh. I think I got this match game down. <laughs> the expo's going to be in for a treat. <laughs> uh, I think I'm going with Steve McQueen. Okay. Uh, he always seems so cool and like, uh, the, not the Seven Samurai, but the one that was based Magnificent on... Magnificent Seven? Seven. Seven. Magnificent Seven. There you go. <laughs> I didn't see him in the Magnificent Seven. Because he, he was dead. He wasn't in it. <laughs> <laughs> he was in the original, wasn't he? Oh, I don't know. That's not the one I saw. Did he drive uh, a car in it? Yeah, yes, he was in the original. I mean, <laughs> I mean he wasn't Denzel Washington. <laughs> I might change my or mind Chris if he Pratt. wasn't in the Chris original. Chris Pratt, there you go. <laughs> but, like but he always... Denzel. Well, Denzel was the main yeah, character. Yeah, but so. everyone talked about Chris Pratt. Uh, I feel that Chow Yun-Fat had more depth to his acting than cool. Okay. Um, going back to this... Uh, Although he was very cool. Going back to this cheerleader thing at Disney... They were called the Indianettes. And they, they look mostly like white girls. Okay. Uh, mm. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, so, oh, my God. They said, Disney said that this uh, live performance does not reflect our core values. They also said that this was not consistent with the audition tape the school provided. <laughs> you think? <laughs> we have immediately put it pl- measures in place so this is not repeated. How do you not repeat that? Sniper's ready. <laughs> <laughs> that would be interesting. Yeah. Well, uh, six, th- six teenager girls were shot today, <laughs> cheerleaders at Disney today, but... <laughs> <laughs> but they were being very racist <laughs> at the time. Did they get whisked away to it's a tiny, tiny world? Uh, <laughs> I-, I think you can probably shoot one. 
<laughs> and get the message across. Yes. <laughs> and then yeah. hang them. Just hang them and from... Then uh, hang her up front. On Main Street. <laughs> <laughs> Just put her head on a pipe. Yeah. <laughs> you see, girls, this is what happens. Or no, you have to that, take off one of her limbs and put it in each of the oh, each of the Disney <laughs> parts. Now, now you're just getting disgusting. That's too far. Why, why wouldn't you scalp them? That's what they were chanting. <laughs> that seems racist. That's what they were asking for. So I guess Frontierland will get the scalp. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we lost more sponsors this week. <laughs> no, we're on the side of them killing them. It's a, wait, that doesn't sound right. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> we're on the side of making them, uh, teaching them a lesson. So, well, we, so we either got, we're uh, we're talking about ogling little girls or killing high school thank cheerleaders. Thank heaven or, or killing them. So we have to have balance. Thank it's God for little girls. Of... Thank God for little girls. <laughs> Jesus. What else Ladies... This is not indicative of how we feel about you. <laughs> Nothing we've set up until this point. I apologize. From this point on. <laughs> From this point forward. <laughs> Blame Scab, because it just went to hell when he showed up. I never thought I would say this. Where's Blake? I said <laughs> I was shocked and appalled by that. <laughs> this movie that was clearly about a pedophile <laughs> won Best Picture. Did Polanski do direct it? <laughs> I don't even know who directed it. We will find out. Woody, it's going to be Woody Allen. It's got it. No, I, I had it pulled up still on my... It's probably going to be Chevalier. I think it was one of the only two um, or three films to only be... Or to win Best Picture, to not be nominated for anything else. It was no. directed by Vincente Millenia, Minnelli. I'm sorry. Vincente Minnelli. Fun fact That's about him. Liza Minnelli's father. Fun maybe. fact about him. He went to jail six years later. And it was written by no Alan J. Lerner... And it was based on a novella by oh. by Colette. Huh. And I'm oh, sure okay. the novella didn't have the song, so the novella is automatically not as disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, thank it, heaven it, it for little girls. <laughs> stars Marie Chevalier, who apparently is the, wrote song, the song. Yes. <laughs> wow. You know that lear- that picture on Wikipedia? I know we're on podcast. So I'm sorry, but Jim, back me up. That looks like every 1940s and 50s uh, actor, doesn't it? Like old time actor or radio personality, that picture. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, kind of pretty much what I figured he would look like. Learner. Well, <laughs> well granted, Leslie Caron was twenty seven when the movie. Came. But she, she didn't po- look like she was fourteen. <laughs> but they were talking about her being in school and. Okay, Brian. What do we have next? Uh, next, we've got from Nerdly Out Loud. Oh. Ah! They would like to know what's the Super Bowl equivalent in a real sport. Like, uh, say, I don't know, real football? That would be the Super Bowl. They are asking for a friend. Oh, well, that's nice. Super Bowl equivalent in a real in sport. A real sport. Would WrestleMania would be WrestleMania. The Super Bowl. Uh, or uh, the Champions League. Where's Blake? He's the soccer guy, right? Yeah, the uh, what, uh, what UEFA did, Champions League. What did they play in League? Ted Lasso? Oh, I forget. Football. Foosball. Yeah, but what was the... Trophy. What were they going for? Like The Rutherford. championship of the English Premier, Premier League. League. Uh, no, they, no, well, they were going they for... They were not getting relegated. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I, would, I, I would go like the Champions League uh, championship. The Champions League or the Premier League? Champions League. Where, where the champions of all the leagues in Europe and everything get together and play. Oh, okay. Hey, Brian. Yes, uh, Lerner. Who you know? Uh, he was addicted to amph- amphetamines. 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 Thank you. Uh, so just to let you know. Uh, so that was not good. Well, let's just move on because Jason <laughs> stops talking Wait. about. He was married eight times. Who uh, did I miss? Lerner, him? the guy that wrote this. The guy that wrote. Oh, the guy that wrote Gigi. Wrote the screenplay for Gigi. Yes. Uh, <laughs> You're still talking about Gigi. Yes. Yeah, that's why I'm trying to move on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, next we have from Bob. Bob. So, finally saw Shang-Chi. Is his sister going to be a villain after taking over her father's organization? Yes. Spoilers. I think the spoiler window is closed for Shang-Chi. Do you think she becomes a villain, though? Yes. Okay. Or she at least becomes an antagonist. Is she... I thought you guys already read the books. I never read Shang-Chi. I never read Shang-Chi. 
Uh, I, I, can't, have, I can't read. I have one it's book. It's mostly pictures. I have one book that he's Colors. in that he was a uh, he was like guest starring with uh, in a Spider Man book. That's the only thing I ever have of him. So, uh, do you still have it, or has he sold that yet? No, I have it. Okay. I haven't sold anything yet. Uh, that's up for an Oscar. Uh, Shang Chi. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so it's coming to America. Oh God, that was. <sighs> but it's up for best costumes, right? How good were the costumes? It's same it's as the first one. <laughs> same as the first one. <laughs> I don't know. The first review I heard about coming to America was people talked about how good the costumes were. Granted, that was the only good part yes. I heard about it. So when it was nominated for costumes, it was... It might be surprised. one of the worst films of last it's, year. Well, it may be one of the worst films of all time. It's down there with Duplex <laughs> and Greatest Show on Earth. <laughs> how about How Green Is My Valley? How about Gigi? <laughs> See, I just said, Jim, we're not talking about that. Stop talking about Gigi. <laughs> so Duplex, huh? <laughs> Great cookies. <laughs> Moving on, what do you got? All right, wrapping this up from Professor Number One at Doctor Number One. An American basketball player is now in the Russian justice system for having hashish oil in her luggage. This does not seem like a good place to be right now. (laughs) What other country's justice system would you be unwise to be in if you were an American? Uh, Singapore. Is that the the one with the Claire Danes movie, the something yes. Rangoon? Yes, yes. Well, Singapore's also where the kid got caned. Yeah, Singapore is where the kid got caned. I'm not. Sure <laughs> the kid where. deserved it. Yeah, he chewed gum. No, he vandalized cars. You know what? It's against a lot of chew gum in Singapore. Though. Well, that's fine, but it's like also they will vandal- cane you if you chew gum. Are you sure about that? Yeah, I just said it. Oh, okay. Uh, if the kid vandalized cars, you go to a foreign country and break the law, you deserve what you get. Uh, China, mm. yeah. uh, North Korea, North Korea, North, North Korea, Korea. Probably, would probably be the worst. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jeff, Scab, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> you will have a higher chance of the death penalty there. <laughs> I will say that. Um, uh, what, so the Carolina, one of the Carolinas, brought back um, firing squad. Firing squad. You get to choose now. There's a couple states actually have firing squad as an option. Uh-huh. It just hasn't been used in a hundred years. Nineteen seventy-seven. I think that would, I think that would be better than electric chair, right? Well, definitely de- better than electric chair. It depends on how accurate the person with the re- real everybody is. shoot a limb. <laughs> Wait a so minute, is it like three people? Or? I'm not sure. I there, there's seventeen. Everybody who lined up with guns don't all have live bullets, so they don't know. Won't ever know. I thought it was Alex just Paul one head of blank. <laughs> Was it just one hand of blank? I thought it was always just one. Just I thought it was the... only one or two had a live uh, the actual other... one. Everybody else had blanks. I always heard that only one had a blank, so no one knew if they shot for real or not. Well, but they... you had enough shooting that you would actually get the job done and not just <laughs> Only Alec Baldwin has a bullet. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Does the other guns have like a stick come out that says bang like the Joker? <laughs> <laughs> we got you! So firing squad is going to take take place on the movie set of Rust. <laughs> God damn. Uh, anyways, several mer- military personnel is what it says. So. Um, <laughs> what the hell was that? Several military personnel. That's the number of people. All we got was several. Sometimes one or more They're- soldiers of the firing squad may be issued a rifle containing a blank cartridge. In such cases, soldiers of the firing squad are not told beforehand whether they are using live ammunition. Either are people on the set of Rust. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. So there you go. So who says we're not a history podcast? Look at that. I do. Uh, It was brought into the criminal justice system, uh, obviously, a couple hundred years ago, because guns were uh, readily available as opposed to other forms. and As opposed to electricity. Just like now, they're readily available. Down the hall. I, down the hall. I could legally be carrying a gun right now. Yes, you can. <laughs> Actually, in my area of the woods, I think you have to. I think it's required. <laughs> in fact, if you don't have one, I don't think you can go into a store. So, uh, let's see. Because of bears? Yes. <laughs> Stupid bears. <laughs> what, what was that bear's name a couple weeks ago? That was terrorizing Lake Tahoe or whatever? Big Larry? No, that wasn't it. Walter. I don't know. Anyways. No, I forgot the name of the bear. A polar bear fell on me. <laughs> well, I did try to feed it a grape and bit my arm off. Anyways, moving on. 
Uh, let's see here. Jeff, give me some news of the geek music. News of the geek music. Per comicbookmovie.com. In the early 2000s, Marvel Entertainment had big plans for its characters on screen. After staving off bankruptcy, Blade, X-Men, and Spider-Man had all been hits for the company, and several projects were in development around the time which would have been eventually joined them all. One Twitter user recently came across a slate announcement from a pre-Marvel studio days. Uh, while some of the movies did see the light of day, there are many that aren't. So basically this photo is of a spider guy dressed in Spider-Man, like outside of... Um, they think it was like a uh, Hollywood insider, like, hey, studios, this is what we got coming out, you know, like for advertising and that. But they had a list of all the films that were coming out. And at that time, they had many different studios that had them, but they were in the rumor is that they were working together. It may not have been like an end game or anything like that, but they were all like, hey. They were working with Marvel? Yes. Yes. So these were the ones. Take it for what you will. Man Thing, which. Eventually became uh, was so bad they made it, but it was so bad it was never theatrically released. It came to sci-fi, so that's how bad it was. A 2005 Iron Man movie, Namor, Namo, Namor. Uh, let's see here, uh, Silver Surfer, Cap. Uh, let's see, Fury was going to have his own. Uh, Captain America did too, and Deathlock. Deathlock was on there. Uh, let's see here. Um, Deathlock uh, did come out onto Agents of Shield. Shield, James um, Richard. Yeah, Silver Surfer was going to get his own film after the Fantastic Four uh, uh, film, and then they saw the Fantastic Four yes. movie and thought, Nah. Yeah, I don't think so. Weren't there several bad versions of that Fantastic Four? Many, <laughs> many versions. Uh, I think there was five, four. You got the Roger. Oh. Yeah, the Roger Corman, which, which is was the best, never actually released. Yep, just bootleg copies floating around. Awesome. And there was the one. Uh, when did that come out? Then you had the Fantastic Four with uh, yeah. Tim Story, who wrote it or who directed it. And that, that that was the one with uh, uh, Ian Ian Ruffle. Griffith. Yes, and uh, Michael Chiklis, Alba, Jessica Alba. And Chris Evans. And Captain America. Yep. Then they made Captain... And then that had a sequel. Unfortunately. And then they did the next one. The Fan Fort Stick. Yeah. Uh, that was bad. That was who was... With Michael B. Of... Jordan. Yeah. Was that... Rooney. Yeah. Um, that was a Crank... Trank... No, trank. Kate, Kate Rooney. Kate Rooney. Or... Tr- or Kate, Kate, Mara. Mara. <laughs> Kate Mara. Kate Mara. Kate <laughs> Mara. Rooney Mara. Is, <laughs> or it's Kate Mara, but uh, the other one is Rooney Mara, not uh, Mara Rooney. Trank is the one. Josh Trank is Josh the one that directed Trank. that. Yeah. Okay. And now they're supposedly making another one. So there you go. Uh, let's see here. Jeff? Oh, that'd be me. Not you. Scab yeah. Jeff. Yes. Okay. We're going to go through these. Can't take too much time. Okay. But we're going to do your Oscar picks, and we're going to write them down. Jeff, you got them over there, too? Just in case I lose this one. Well, i got to write him down so I know what to pick when I'm at his Oscar party. We got 11. So well, I, I think Power of the Dog is going to win. Best Picture, Best Director, uh, Best Screenplay. Be- well, hold on. Best Picture, Best Director? I, I think they'll give it to her as the director uh, because uh, this would be two years in a row for her, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. And she didn't do a bad job. It was uh, a totally decent job. But I really think Spielberg did a better job than she did. In Whoa. West Side Story? It, West Side Story, they took uh, one of the, a lot of people say, one of the greatest movies of all time. And I think in every single way, he made it better. Wow. Without a doubt. <laughs> And it did win Best Picture back in 1960. It, it did. I could see it winning but, Best Picture again, just uh, to do the whole. But my, I'm going with Jane. Uh, Jane. Well, you said director. Best Picture, and, Best Director, and uh, Screenplay. We're not doing Screenplay this year. We changed it up this year. Okay. Uh, let's see. Documentary. We're not doing Screenplay. That should be one of the top six awards. I like changing it up. Documentary <laughs> Feature. Then just get rid of Best Picture. <laughs> uh, we will next year. Uh, Ascension. <laughs> Attica, Flea, Summer of Soul, or When the Revolution Could Not Be Televised, Riding with Fire. I'm going to, I've seen them all, I'm going to go with Summer of Soul, although I think Ascension was the best. What is Summer of Soul? It's 
apparently there was like a, a Woodstock in Harlem going on at the same okay. time as Woodstock, and it's like Stevie Wonder was there, and he was playing the drums, and it was so weird watching him play the drums. Was uh, he blind at the time? Yes. Oh, okay. I think he was born blind. But... No, he went blind about the age of seven. Oh, did he? So he could have been six in it. That's uh, actually well, but, but, not. But he, it was he so... was no longer little Stevie Wonder. Oh. But it was all these huge people that you've heard of, and they were playing here in, in Harlem, and it was about, uh, it was 69, so there was all this racial mm-hmm. tension. It was, it was a good one, but mm-hmm. I think Ascension was better. Which What's is, Ascension? It starts, it's, there's no audio or no talking at all. It just shows people working in China from the lowest class up to the highest class, and it just shows them a little, or like the lowest class, and then it, it transfers to the next lowest. And that's the whole film? And that's the whole film. Mm-hmm. Like it starts like they're uh, doing farming or whatever, mm-hmm. and then they're making sex dolls or whatever. And oops, no, you're fine. And then that goes to the to the rich elite people who. But it was it was real interesting how they did it, and it was mm-hmm. the most original. But really, documentaries usually have like that one that sticks out. That's like one of my favorites of the year. But this time, not so much. Not so much. Uh, song. I like your take. You go, uh, be alive. That was on King Richard. Uh, Dos Origatos from Encanto. Uh, it's going to be James Bond. Down to Joy. Down to Joy in Belfast. Uh, no Time to Die. There's No Time to Die. And Somehow You Do from Four Good Bo- Days. You somehow you do. So you're saying No Time to Die. So or, or No Time to Die. Or Thank Heavens for Little Girls. <laughs> <laughs> Did that win best song that year? <laughs> no, Gigi was only, is one of the only films that only won best picture and wasn't even nominated for anything else. The, the the picks were like the Oscar guys were like, "Hey, that's a really creepy song." Yeah, but the film's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah let's go do the film, but not the song. The song's too much. But it's really not. Uh, j- just just vote for it. Yeah, yeah it's do fine. You think the No Time to Die deserves to win? Or you I just... yeah, I'm. Okay. I wouldn't be upset if that one won. Fan of Billie Eilish or Yeah, I kinda I kinda like her. Uh, did you see No Time to Die? Yes, I did. Did you enjoy it? Yeah. Okay. I still have to see this last one. Uh that is the last one. No, no, the Spectre. second last one, sorry. Yeah. I still have to see that one. Yeah, you probably should see Spectre before you see before No Time one. to Die. It's like ten years old. Isn't I know. <laughs> I and it's free on Amazon. I just have it. <laughs> he, he he's just a little behind on things. Uh, did you finish Jessica Jones at least? <laughs> yes, yes, I did. Yes, I did. I started rewatching that. Me too. Uh, it's got my favorite bad guy of all time. I just in like comic Jim's book contempt movie. for me. I'll agree. Uh, visual effects: Dune. Dune. Free, Free Guy. We watched Free Guy. Like it was enjoyable, but I don't know if I would put that as like best special effects. They were pretty good. They were okay, but imagine that twenty years ago. But yeah, Dune is. That's going to no, win. No yeah. Time to Die, Shang Chi and Legend of the Ten Rings, and Spider Man No Way Home. I actually saw every movie on that list. I've seen three and a half of them. Three and a tenth, because Dune I think it was thirty minutes. So none. Uh, uh, did you like Free Guy, Jim? I enjoyed Free Guy. It's, yeah, it's a good fun movie. Wait a minute, you're yelling at us to not watch Spider Man? You've never even seen it. No, like I was told not to to stop watching it, so stop I stopped watching Spider Man. Free Guy was enjoyable. Like, it was yeah. fun to watch. And Ryan Reynolds. Did you like Free Guy? I liked it. Okay. It was different. It was original, at least. I'll give it that. Would you Free Guy? No, he'd Free Hat, though. Free Ball. Ah, free, free Ball. <laughs> free Bird. Okay, here's the big one. Free Hat. Free Hat. Free Hat. The best thing. Makeup and hairstyling. Coming to America's got to win, right? Along with Cruella. Dune, The Eyes of Tammy Faye, and House of Gucci. Eyes of Tammy Faye, without a doubt. Okay. You do not recognize Jessica Chastain at all. And it, it's, that's maybe the best makeup and star- hairstyling I've seen. Cruella does a, did a good job. I thought Cruella did a good job with the mm, makeup. Uh, and I'd give them costume. Does she no. look like Tammy Faye? Uh, I don't remember what Tammy from the like. oh. from the side by sides that I've seen. Yes. Okay. Yes. 
Um, Do they have best accent for uh, <laughs> that? Should House be of a Gucci? category. <laughs> Angeline Jolie won that. Oh, she won the Lifetime Achievement Award yes. for that. Yes. I still think Rachel Weisz wants to compete with that, too. Oh, speaking of which, I just saw, I, I don't know what this, what I'm trying to say here, but I just saw House of Gucci, which takes place in Italy, with, or mostly in mm-hmm. Italy, yeah. with the, the Gucci people, and they all speak English, which I've seen that before, where they're... It's takes, stand in, yeah. But they speak it with... Almost uh, insulting Russian Italian accent. accent. Oh, like, and that's what I'm bringing up. It was hor- The accent was horrible. And so, I, if you're going to do it, either go one way or another. Basically, is what you're saying. Right. If you do the accent, is that? Yeah. There's something seems wrong with that. Just do, speak do, English as your. Was that? Uh, what j- you call just it? Your do, audience would. Was just that Lady Gaga? Ke- just do Kevin Costner. <laughs> no, no. You do Sean Connery, yeah, yeah where Sean, you don't attempt any. Yeah, you other. don't attempt any accent. You just do <laughs> like normal. your normal voice. Godspeed, good speed. Um, but was yeah, that, that that was Lady Gaga. Gaga? So here's the interesting thing about House of Gucci. They actually shot her and took her head and put it on a stake in Italy, so no one does that accent again because they thought it was racist. So Disney's uh, doing the same thing. Italy started it too. So no Lady Gaga for a while. <laughs> But uh, I, I, I like wasn't House sure what to think you. of that as I was wondering, like, how do you, how are you supposed to do that? Because they did go to America, mm-hmm. so you may have needed to tell the difference between the American speaking and the American accent and the Italian speaking English in, a, in an I, Italian accent. I didn't dislike House of Gucci. Okay. I mean, I was entertained when I watched it. I didn't want okay. to get up and leave. Well, I'm not saying that I disliked it either, but I was the, the afraid accent. that liking it was racist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you think about Song of the South? Anyways, uh, so... Is Italian a race? It's a culture. Uh, yeah. So culturalism? Sure. There you go. Uh, animated feature, I've seen four of the five. Encanto, Flea, Luca, Mitchells vs. Machines, and Raya and the Last Dragon. Which one are you picking? I've seen them all, and Kanto's going to win. I know. But Mitchell's vs. the Machines was by far the best. That's one of the best films of the year, I think. See, I love... Mitchell's vs. the Machine was fun. I really enjoyed it. It was like a zombie movie. There was even a mall. Yes, yes. (laughs) And Kanto, I was... Like, the songs are catchy. I was disappointed in Kanto. Like, I enjoy, like, that they're doing different cultures. Like, Disney's doing that, and I appreciate that, and it's fun. But, like... I was bored. Like, I didn't see what, like, the... like. But they just, should at least take cultures that aren't boring. No, no, it's not the culture that's boring. The storyline was. It may have been the culture that was boring. Stop it. But, <laughs> you know, I, I literally watched... It. <laughs> like American culture, we had zombie or robots <laughs> attacking in malls. But, like, what? They watch- had magic. <laughs> 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 so, so you'd think if they're going true Colombian culture, there'd be, like, at least a little cartel involved? Uh, Get out. Oh. Get out. Get out. <laughs> I just got suspended. <laughs> I love Luca. Luca's one of my favorite films. I of the thought year. Luca was, I thought everything except for uh, Raya and the Last Dragon was better than Encanto. Oh. Or, yeah, yeah. I like Raya and the Last Dragon better than Encanto. I like that one a lot. The only thing I know about Luca is he lives on the second floor. Get out. Oh, there was a. Something happened this year in nominations that's never happened before, and. And it blows my mind that this happened. But something, a movie, the same movie was nominated for Best Foreign Language Film, Mm -hmm. Best Documentary, and Best Animated Film. What was that? Flea? Flea. Wow. (laughs) Will it win any of them? No. (laughs) Because normally you don't get documentary and animation together. Exactly. And that's what, and you got foreign language now. Uh Uh-huh. Uh, best Supporting Actress, Jessie, Jessie Buckley from Lost Daughter. Ariana DeBose from West Side Story. Judy Dench, that damn dude, Judy Dench from Belfast. Ugh, Kirsten Dunst from The Power of the Dog. And um, Ms. Ellis from King Richard. I'm going to try that. Well, it's good that they finally invited, uh, what, Ariana DeBose? From West Side Story? Yes. Yeah. I, I think that she's going to win. Yeah. And she wasn't invited. Yeah, she originally. Would, how are no, you not she still invited? Isn't. She she's presenting. Uh, how do you do that? <laughs> she wasn't. She goes. I wanted to be there and celebrate with my cast, 
But she's nominated. Isn't the nomination the rest- a guaranteed? Apparently not. Well, they're not even going to give away certain awards during the telecast anymore. Like Best Picture. Uh, best Supporting Actor. Uh, Sirion Hins from Belfast. The guy from CODA is my... Troy Kotzer. Okay, that's your pick. Jesse that's Plemons pick. from The Power of the Dog. J.K. Simmons being the Ricardo. Lance. Cody mm-hmm. Smith uh, McPhee from The Power of the Dog. You said CODA. Okay. Uh, best Actress. Jessica Chastain from the eye, uh, Eyes of Tammy Faye. You said she looked good at your. She was the makeup was amazing. Olivia Coleman from The Lost Daughter. Penelope Cruz from Parallel Mothers. Nicole Kidman from Being the Ricardos, and Kristen Stewart from Spencer. Isn't that Kristen? Kristen Stewart. No. Kristen, Stewart. Kristen Stewart. Sorry, I was thinking. I'm of going Chastain. You're going Chastain. Okay. She did phenomenal. Better question: Why is Being the Ricardos nominated? I heard that was not a good film. It was pretty good. Was it? I heard yeah, nothing about it. I enjoyed it. I think she did a real good job. Nicole Kidman? Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. as, as portraying Lucille Ball. I'm not. Mm-hmm. Well. I was actually surprised. At, you know, I'd forgotten who she was. You know, mm-hmm. it was, that it wasn't. Nicole well, I Kidman. Knew it wasn't. Yeah, but I, yeah, I'd forgotten it was Nicole Kidman. I'm like, I believe it's Lucille Ball. Okay. Mm-hmm. Best actor? Javier Bardem. Will Smith. Ah, oh, from King Richard. Which wasn't, which was a pretty good movie as well. King Richard? Mm-hmm. Was Will Smith not as good in it as he should be to win? No, no. I think oh. he was. He the way was you said Will Smith sounded like you disagreed. It was almost like he tempted to it. it, it yeah, it, it just seems like too much of a runaway in the odds and everything with the other people who are. How long is his speech going to be at the Oscars, Will Smith? Over or under on five minutes? I'll go under. I'll go, I'll go under. under, cause under. Gonna, well, it doesn't matter. He'll still talk. They'll come back from commercial. <laughs> I'll say under 10 seconds. Okay. Because he's not going to win. Okay. <laughs> uh, best director, you're going to bet on that, Probably. Jeff? Nope. <laughs> and best picture, you got Belfast, Coda, Don't Look Up, Drive My Car, Dune, King Rick- Richard, Licorice Pizza, Nightmare Alley, which I really want to see. It's it's very good. Much better than Greatest Show on Earth. <laughs> and it's about the circus. That's why I... <laughs> Power of the Dog and West Side. So are you saying Power of the Dog? Same so, Power of the Dog, although I think Licorice Pizza is the best of the... Remember that or Drive My Car? Drive My Car was... So how odd a, was Licorice Pizza? Oh, it's very strange. It's, it's <laughs> totally a surrealist film. Yeah. Uh, but it was like uh, I think one of my favorite parts is uh, who's the actor the guy from um, the, the the comedian guy who's uh, he's speaking to his Japanese wife and he like speaks with a totally racist Japanese accent to her <laughs> and then she actually speaks in Japanese back like no, I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm, yeah, not, I'm definitely not gonna do it this, this episode's towed the line a lot Jeff let's, let's hold it back scab. <laughs> But but it's it's just so it just reminded me like like this year there's uh, there was an Italian film Hand of God which was real real good but it was a lot like a Fellini movie and then there was Drive My Car which is a lot like French New Wave movie and then there's the Licorice Pizza which is a lot like the old uh, surrealist films like the Boonwell films and. But none of those are actually licorice pizza is going to win original screenplay. Um, did, and then this year, I think they said fans get to pick. Is that correct for a film? Like they they pick best picture their own. Like it's a special category this year, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know exactly what that is or how that's going to actually. Do you have to tweet it or yes. something? Yes. Yes. So it's not really fans. It's Twitter users. Yes. Um, so we, we, we don't we, count that as an official. Uh, uh, I don't know. We can give a good old Hobie bump. Oh, yeah. What do we want to give a Hobie bump to? Uh, here we go. In an effort to drive engagement with the Oscars in the face of dwindling ratings, uh, they had introduced a they fan, fan, favorite, the ratings? fan favorite award this year. Uh, they uh, Audiences are voting on their favorite movie of 2021 on Twitter by tweeting the title along with hashtags Oscars fan favorite and sweepstakes. Or you can go online and fill out a form. Uh, let's see here. Uh, the winner of the contest is expected to be announcing it. Uh, social media analytics company Diesel Labs provided this uh, business insider the uh, potential winner of the contest based on tweets and everything else. As of now, 
Army of the Dead is winning the zombie one from Netflix. Followed Isn't that from like 2019. No, no. And followed by Amazon Prime Videos Cinderella. This is why we <laughs> don't do this. This is why we can't have nice things. <laughs> my favorite film of the year, and I haven't seen two of them, but out of all the other ones, my favorite film of the year is Hand of God. It's on Netflix. Well worth watching. Uh, people are also tweeting Zack Snyder's Justice League is getting a lot of picks, and they said it's ineligible to win because it's not among the list of Oscar-eligible films this year because it already came out, even though it's technically a different one because um, it has it. Spider-Man No Way Home is also in the top five right now. So Army of the Dead, you could say Oscar-winning Army of the Dead. Is that what I just said, Army get, of the Dead? Do they get a trophy? Because uh, if you pick best at my Oscar party, you get a trophy. It, they said they have not said if they're going to get an Oscar trophy or not. How do you not, though? If you're going to put this out there, you got to give it to them, right? No. Oh, okay. Well, never mind. Well, see, the simple fact of the matter is it would the Academy the is the ones that's giving the thing, and the people in the Academy yeah. are the voters. So Joe Yahoo tweeting shit out mm-hmm. isn't the voters for this. He has nothing to do with the Academy. I think. I think the idea is just... Terrible to begin with, and yeah, How if you it? give it terrible, terrible. If you give it, uh, you know, the credence of an actual award, then your award now loses all meaning. Speaking of movies, Jeff, show, tell us the box office news and world reports over there. If you give me a, a, a theme song, box office. Thank God for box office news. All right. The box office news report for March 18th through the March 19th, only two days. That's a shitty-ass weekend. Uh, Number one, The Batman made $37 million, a total of $300 million on a $200 million budget. Is that any good? The Batman? Yeah, it's worth seeing. I would really like to see it. I haven't seen that yet either. Uh, number two, Jujutsu Kaisen Zero colon the movie. Did the I read an- that right? Anime. Zero yeah, is actually yeah, you're the asking title. Me. Yeah. Okay. It made seventeen point seven million in its opening weekend on an unknown budget. Uncharted made another eight million, a total of one hundred twenty-six million on a budget of one hundred. It will not die. It made its uh, budget back at the U.S. box yep. office. So. X made four point four million in its opening weekend on an unknown budget. Hmm. And Dog <laughs> made another four point one million, a total of fifty four point two million on a budget of fifteen million. Latest review. Uh, I was reading an article about that, like how it keeps making money, and they said like families are going to see this, like thinking it's a like comedy, and they're like, it's not a comedy. <laughs> like they're the trailers are showing it as like funny oh. in that. Well, attempting to be funny, Jeff. Well, I, I, I thought they were trying to be a comedy, so... Yeah, and they said it's a drama. <laughs> it's more drama. Oh, then they really missed out on the uh, advertising. Yes. For their geniuses. Yes. It's Cause made its money and several then times because over. Because no one would go see it if it was a drama. But if they thought it was funny because of the three unfunny well, The guy's blind, that... and then he becomes unblind. No, no, that's not the, t- the subject. <laughs> <sighs> what else we got? Uh, upcoming March twenty fifth of this year, we have seven days. Seven days. If their prearranged date, organized by their traditional Indian parents, wasn't uncomfortable enough, Ravi and Rita are forced to shelter in place together as COVID nineteen reaches uh, COVID nineteen's reach intensifies. And then they find a videotape that has this girl in a seven well. Seven days. <laughs> You know how you, how you stop that? Just walk away from the TV. <laughs> Just walk away. You don't get killed. That's all you have to do. That's all you have to do. Yeah, what if you get rid of all your TVs? Yeah. How does she get I forget together? what comedian said that, and he's like, The Ring, stupidest film ever. Turn off the TV, or just walk away. Um, she still comes through because <laughs> she can't power, walk that far. Her power will turn on the TV. No, oh, okay. It did. He had off the TV. And oh, it turned, turned back on. Itself. Okay. Well, walk away. Just walk away. She can't go that far. Unplug it. Yeah. She still come in. I don't know. That's about that. the power of death. It can turn on unplugged television. I like Brian's idea better. Stop seeing the ring. I Stop don't. watching the video. <laughs> 
What else we got? Uh, also coming out, The Lost City. Ugh. A reclusive romance novelist on a book tour with her cover model gets swept up in a kidnapping attempt that lands them both in a cutthroat jungle adventure. Isn't Fuck this that movie. one of the sections of Love Actually? <laughs> Is that, uh, Andrew Lincoln's going to have a sign Sandra, outside. Sandra, Sandra Bullock, Bullock and Brad Pitt, Brad Tatum, Tatum, Tatum Tate, so, Daniel Radcliffe. Oh, Radcliffe. Mm-hmm. Tate's Tate might make the top five in two, two different movies. movies. Oscar Nunez. Ghost Dog, just so we can get Tate's in the top five. Twice. Whoa, that's a change of pace. Look at you. Hey, it's for Tate's. Oh, okay. Uh, do you think uh, Lost City's going to be up next year no. for Best Oscar, Jeff? I'm asking Scab. He's the film critic. Uh, could be. Um, the the original title I'm not kidding was the Lost City of Dick, and they the studio said no, we can't do that. Like that was the original title, and I guess like there was they were worried that they were going to get a bad rating or something like that. But Channing Tatum said that he was ticked that one of the reasons he picked the he yeah. said he would do it is because he loved the title. So he's 12 years old. I think. I guess he just doesn't have the. Uh... The poll that Sam Jackson does when they try to change titles. Who's the lead in this? Sandra Bullock? Sandra Bullock and Channing Tatum. See, Jeff, Scab, that's an appropriate relationship, right? Ch- Tatum, uh, Tate, Tate and uh, Bullock? It's mm-hmm. not, like, creepy or anything. Uh, Unless Sandra Bullock is playing 14. That's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, I think that was the... All right, are we going to try our uh, next Canadian uh, delicacy? Oh, this looks nasty. Jeff, Scab doesn't have a piece. No, that's okay. Big Turk. This looks nasty. There's like a gelatin in the middle. That's the Turkish Delight part, I'm guessing. Oh, God. Yeah, it's covered in chocolate. I'm not used to Turkish Delight covered in chocolate. Oh. That's actually not bad. I'm fishing chocolate. (laughs) It's a chewy chocolate. Because of the Turkish July in the middle. I actually don't mind that. Oh, God, no. <laughs> really? Once I got through the chocolate, like, put it in, you get chocolate. I'm like, okay, it's chocolate. Oh, I got them. No. Oh. <laughs> Take a drink, Joe. There's a lot of chewiness to it. Lots of chewiness. I love chewy candies. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Brian? No. I mean, we were sitting here eating Jolly Rancher gummies. Those mm-hmm. are great. This, comparatively speaking... Oh, no, that's terrible. It oh. has, like, a faint taste of, like, a Luden's cough drop. <laughs> but just, like, real faint. But I would rather have that. Cough drops? Oh. I'd rather have that cough drop than what I just <laughs> ate. The good news is we got another one. Here you go, Jeff. Here's a little oh, piece no, of no, leftover. Uh, the good news is this is, might be going to the Comic Expo uh, as a giveaway. There you go. Jason, maybe no, get that way. That. No, no, no. no, no, no. I liked it. So Yeah, I'm not going to eat a whole bar of it. It's not a whole bar. It's, it's just got a little piece. piece. No. No. So anyways, thanks. That's Pop Culture Cafe. Yes, thanks for that one. Ugh. Scab, you excited about I the Oscars? Know. I, I am excited. This this may be the second year in a row that I've seen everything before the Oscars start. Ah, you have two left. I know, and one of them I might not get to. Uh, especially if Jim has anything to do with it. <laughs> Sad part is, I'm going to walk home with the trophy from the Scab Jeff party. <laughs> we can't keep eating! We can't! you got to get this taste out of our mouths. <laughs> Boston after- cream Pop-Tart, Jim, send yep. me a piece. I will say the aftertaste is not great. On that Turkish thing, Big Turk. Nothing about that is great. Okay, top five this week is top five favorite award show host. Uh, I had my top ten ready to go. Uh, Jeff? No, you didn't. Jeff, how many did you have? Uh, I had one ready to go, and I was going to make the others up as I went. Oh, I have none. Uh, Scab, how many do you have? I've got my top five. Oh, do you? Well, I just... While you guys were tasting, I wrote them down. <laughs> I already have my top two. Oh. And, of course, I know my number one. Okay. Jim, how many you got? I don't know. Okay. Uh, Jim, uh, Scab, you go first. What's your number five? Top five favorite award show host. Uh, I put Billy Crystal because I really couldn't think of any other. That's story. my number five. That's a good <laughs> one. That's a good one. I think he's copying you. Nope. 
Uh, Jim, or Jeff, I'm sorry, what, what's yours? Uh, Bob Hope. Oh, that's uh, my number four. That's my number one. <laughs> <laughs> I only wrote two down, and that was the one. <laughs> uh, he did host a long time. When, 17 times he hosted the Oscars. Can you toss those Pop-Tarts back over here? I think I need something. You said just award show host, right? Yeah. Okay. Award. Not war host. Award. Yes. All mine are Oscar hosts. Uh, my number five was, uh, who did you say? Billy Crystal. Uh, number five for you, Jim. My number five, um, he may not have won a floppy, mm-hmm. but it's Scab Jeff. Oh. Oh, I do host that. For part. hosting the floppies. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Number five for you? Um, number five for me, I'll say Jeff. Jeff who? Now. Oh. Job. Only fifth? <laughs> What's your number four? Uh, number four, Doug. Oh. Doug is pretty good at that. Wow, he picked yes. Doug over me. I probably would, too. Oh, yeah, the floppies are an award show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is why you don't have one. <laughs> Thanks, Scab, for forgetting about us. Number four for you, Jim. Uh, the Dit Man. Oh, that's good. That's good. Um, my number four is Blake, because he never shows up for the floppy, <laughs> and that makes it so much better. So those Pop-Tarts are pretty good. Mm-hmm. Boston Cream is pretty good. That's not bad. Pretty good. Number four for you, Jeff? Uh, Anne Hathaway. Ew. She was not good. Oh, no, wait, she was good. Who's the guy she was with? That James Franco. Oh, he was awful, uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. He made her look real good. Yeah. <laughs> Number four, Scab? Uh, Bob Hope. Oh, that's right. Number three? Uh, Johnny Carson. Mm. Uh, oh, you were pointing at me yeah. to go. I thought you were, like, motioning. No. Yeah, okay. Uh, my number three is David Letterman. If only for just doing Uma, Oprah, Uma. <laughs> I had forgotten about that, or I would have picked him. My number three is Conan O'Brien. He did the Emmys several times. Number three for you, Jeff, Jim. My number three mm-hmm. is Jeff. Woo! Uh-huh. Wow, nice. For number- hosting the floppies. Oh, okay. Number three for you. So wouldn't you have been knocked off the board when he had Jeff? Yeah, but I'd like to not be knocked off the board. <laughs> uh, is that, a, is that board. an option now? <laughs> that he hadn't chose what he was putting out there yet. Uh, number three for you, Brian. Uh, number three for me mm-hmm. is myself. Oh. Ah. Okay. Number two? Uh, number two would be Genie. Mm. Genie Ooh, that's, that's, that's a good one. That's, that's a good one. Great cheese. That's cake. my number two. That's my number two. So Genie is number two. Go ahead, Jim. Ricky Jervis. Ah, oh, that's my number one. That was my number two. Yeah, there you go. Number two is Genie for me. Number two for you, Jeff. Number two for me is Jim, my brother. Oh, oh come on. <laughs> that's my number one. Oh. But, but, but not for the floppies. Oh. Well, what I oh our, our CMT our country yes, music our, our basement country music awards we hosted a country music award in our basement uh, about sixteen years <laughs> because there were so many different ones we just we get on the bus <laughs> <laughs> so we'd give out awards for country music <laughs> that weren't country music <laughs> yeah whatever we gave out Led there were just so many country music award shows we thought we deserved to have our own I like. Number two for you, Scab. Was Ricky Gervais. Who's number one for you? Faye Dunaway. She gave the award to La La Land for Best Picture. Ah, then God, take it away. She was a presenter, not a host. Uh, she was hosting that part of the show. <laughs> <laughs> number one? Number one is me. Oh. Number one is uh, Ricky Gervais. Uh, number one for you? Well, if we're doing presenters, I'm going with what, John Travolta? Ah. <laughs> well, he wasn't presenting, he was introducing <laughs> the next person to come on to speak. Yeah, Akeem close enough. Olajuwon. Nadal Nazim. Nadal He's presenting uh, again this year or something. I know. <laughs> I think the Oscars will just fuck with him and just give him the hardest name to say. <laughs> oh, they're going to they're gonna be a, a joke about yeah. it. Number one for you, Brian. Uh, number one for me. Mm-hmm. Should have this right in town. You should have it right there. Yeah, this, is, this is tough. Okay. I'm going to say Coach Taylor. 
from Friday Night Lights? Yes. Uh, they hosted a a, a Panthers award banquet. award banquet. Nice. In one of the episodes. Damn it! Can I change my number one to Michael Scott? That was my honorable mention. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought of that. The host of the Dundee. <laughs> Good job. Will Ferrell was on my uh, honorable mention list. Oh, I for wasn't that. going to say. Oh, what was his name in the show? D'Angelo. D'Angelo Vickers. Vickers. <laughs> He, uh, was, he was terrible. He was horrible. Yeah, but I <laughs> well, liked him. Well, uh, we did have... Oh, I'm sorry, Brian. No, no, please. Uh, we did actually have people that put effort into this. Uh, we put a lot of effort into this. I, I, did, I did you not. see... This was a did you not hear how long it took for me to choose? That's true. I had so many good top-notch choices. Hey, I had one entered. Steve, at Everything I Learned from Movies, had... I always liked Tina Fey and Amy Poehler... Hosted shows, but honestly, I don't watch enough to give a full top five. Canadian of the year, co. Canadian Canadians of the year. Oh, you might want to talk the, to Dr. Dana. I think the her Twitter and Doug. account called Canadians. Canadians of the, of the year. It used to be co Canadians of the year. Yeah, now it's Canadians. Uh, ja- uh, number five, Jason. Oh, take that. Number four, or sorry, number one is a tie. Jeff, Jim, Brian, Blake, Scab, Jeff, Doug, Dr. Bednar, and the Dip Man. Hey! At least I'm in the top five. Yeah, you didn't even make mine. (laughs) (laughs) You weren't weren't on mine either. Well, I expect that from you, Jim. Uh, Brian? I know. Take the high road. Will it fucking kill you once in a while? He he always tells you, you wouldn't take the medium road? Yes. (laughs) He takes the medium road every time. That's where I'm at. That's where I live, man. Come up to the high road. It's It's nice up here. Number five. Oh, fuck. From doctor number one. <laughs> Timothy Offalant. Number that. four. Sarah Russa Charcart- Charcuterie. Saoirse Charcuterie. Ricky Gervais. Charcuterie Letterman. <laughs> Bob Charcuterie. <laughs> fuck you. I think I said it better, though. Oh, crap. I yes. should have picked, like, all the hosts of the uh, roasts. Oh, yeah, that would have been good. That, that's good enough to close to an award, isn't we it? We should put that on there uh, next time. Well, not next week, because we'll do something else. But we should do top five roast masters. There you go. Oh. Jeff Ross. <laughs> yeah. Jeff yeah. Ross. Jeff Ross. Uh, uh, it says... Henny Youngman. Se- <laughs> Benny Youngman. <laughs> Henny Young- Take my wife, please. Yes. Uh, let's see here. That was Friars Club, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it says here on our preview for this week that we're talking about Abbott Elementary. It was renewed for a second season. Okay, so we're good now. Uh, I don't have to change that summary. Moving on. Uh, wow, that's laziness. Yes, thank you. Uh, we talked about it. What, what is it about? It's about school. About elementary school teachers. Okay, is it any good? Yeah, it's really good. It's in Philadelphia. Uh, it, and the cast is really doing a good job, too. Like West they, Philadelphia, born and raised? See, that's why we don't talk. Yeah. Is there a playground? Uh at this elementary school. You know what, Brian? I had enough of your... My what? On the playground. I had enough of your antics this week. My antics. On the playground. Keep it up, mister. Keep it up. I, this You're going to be hanging from the Bob Studios. I'd, I'd like to see that happen. I would, too. Anyway. <laughs> I'm not going. As a warning for others? Yeah. Yeah. You don't see Blake here this week for a reason. He's not uh, hanging. Yeah, oh, he he's will not be warning next week. us. I mean, <laughs> his dead body isn't there. He didn't put his head on a pike or anything. It's too good for. It's not good enough for a pike. Uh, scab. You, you didn't have him drawn and quartered and send pieces of body to <laughs> each of our houses <laughs> <laughs> yet. <laughs> or have we just not received them? Well, I haven't seen anything on my ring doorbell, so he's not <laughs> at my house. Scab, thanks for showing up this week. We appreciate it. Uh, I have all 11 of them down, so we'll see how many you get right. Am I coming back for the results next week? Sure. Uh, talk to the intern. He's the one that kicked, kicked you out last time. Uh, hey, Jeff, do you, would you like to come back next week? Sure. Oh, that sounds great. There you go. Bring, uh, bring the uh, best stepson of the year with you. Well, get him off work the next... Uh, he won't. He'd never speak on... <laughs> Brian, he worked eight hours, okay? <laughs> he had a long day today. Yeah. Uh, bad idea of the week... Uh, number 895, 95, 895? What number are you trying to say? <laughs> 895, bring an intern onto the show. That's a bad idea. That's a terrible bad idea. I love that idea. 894 is the bad idea for 895. There you go. Thanks, Jeff. 
Why don't you speak up sooner so I don't have to keep thinking of these? Uh, let's see here. Um, I was, titles for the show. I think bad idea number five is Gigi. No. <laughs> That or, might be good enough to be in the top three no, no. of that song. <laughs> no, no. 14, because that's how old she is. So 14. But if we want to talk about how, like, Gigi and how those movies don't... What about the television show Euphoria? Yeah. I completely agree. Uh, they're all 16 in that. <laughs> <laughs> Told you, that first episode I watched, I was like, I don't feel comfortable watching this. <laughs> it, like, Yeah, it's... It's rough. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Titles for the show. I got We Are Getting Diabetes, and that's all I had. Well, I have Alarming and Painful. I have It Won Best Picture. I have The Password Is. <laughs> I have Just Put Her Head on a Pike. <laughs> I have Thank Heavens for Little Girls. Nope, nope. And I have Stop Talking About Gigi. <laughs> I have I like that one. one. And it is stop talking about Gigi. <laughs> <laughs> I have anyone can write gourmet. <laughs> I have this episode is sponsored by blank. <laughs> Thank heaven for little blank. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot the name of the bear. <laughs> La La Land should have won. <laughs> you do that every time. <laughs> yes. And she does. the password is. Blank. <laughs> I just did the pa- the password is dot dot dot. <laughs> uh, but blank goes along I mean, with I, the match game. I know. <laughs> uh, let's see. I got. Hey, you're still alive. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh gosh, the eyeball came off. <laughs> Damn uh, peep. <laughs> we're on the side of killing them. <laughs> Uh, yes, that was when we were talking about killing teenage, teenage girl. girls that were at Disney. Um, we are still talking about Gigi. Um, the watery ketchup. And Josh Gad still has no butthole. Did you know that? He has no butthole? Josh Gad? I did. So I guess we're talking about, stop talking about Gigi. <laughs> Stop talking about Gigi. <laughs> I like that. Change approved. Uh, thank heavens for a little... No! <laughs> no! No! <laughs> Blank. Stop <laughs> this Scab, thanks for showing up this week. And uh, hopefully you get a good uh, review next week for your uh, picks. So, Roger says goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. You've been listening to Hobie!